Hey, welcome to the Birdcraft. We're trying to perfect the craft of aircraft maintenance. We're also marketing being an aircraft mechanic as a very valuable career and rewarding career to go into. Today we're gonna to be replacing a fuel tank on an R-22 helicopter. Replacing the fuel tank itself is not what we hope to teach you guys to do, but hopefully we can share some common maintenance practices and a little bit of knowledge to apprentices who hope to go on and be successful in this career. One of the things I hope to share with you today are two useful tools in aircraft maintenance. One, actually both, you, you must use in order to perform aircraft maintenance. One's gonna be the aircraft maintenance manual, and the other one's gonna be the aircraft illustrated parts catalog. You're mostly gonna use these two as a pair. I find at times you'll be involved maybe in more in one than in the other. But the IPC, the illustrated parts catalog, is a very extremely useful tool. All right, here's one popular maintenance practice that you can do as an apprentice or just as a mechanic in general. When another mechanic asks you to go get wrenches or when you go to your own toolboxes after eyeballing a nut and knowing that you need a three quarter inch wrench, don't grab your three quarter inch wrench. Grab a few wrenches, grab the next size above and the next size under you know, you don't want to take multiple trips to your, to your toolbox or to someone else's toolbox. Someone asks you for a tool, get that tool and get, get a couple of sizes around there so you're not running back and forth just in case someone miss eyeballed a nut size. Maintenance tip number two, this one is huge, especially when it goes back to putting things together when you're working with other mechanics. It's huge, I do this. I try, I try to make sure, and one of the industry practices are, to leave the job to where another mechanic can come in and pick up right where you left off. So that means when you pull screws out of something, you want to bag and tag. If you don't have the cotton screw baggies, the military grade, the tie back to the panel, that's fine and dandy. You can have a Ziploc bag, and we just write on it with permanent marker right where the screws came out of. And another thing, you guys, is when you're removing screws, even if the screw isn't stripped, if it's ugly, if it's an ugly screw, if it's an ugly screw, another industry practices replaces screw. Every inspection I've ever been a part of, we go ahead and order screws because you're gonna need them. There's gonna be screws that get stripped out and you'll have to replace them. And there'll be screws that come out all fine, but when you go to put them in, they're just not acceptable. They don't meet the standard. You can't get a firm grip and you don't wanna set the next mechanic up to fail. So there's actually maintenance tips two and three. Bag and tag and replace bad screws. Maintenance tip number four, invest in the right tools, right? You're gonna be doing jobs and you're gonna find out that your standard box in or combination of wrenches aren't helping you or your standard ratchet and socket setup. It, you're, you're not able to reach what you need to reach and you're gonna find that you need some special tools like this crow's foot. Invest in special tools right if you find that you're doing a job and you need a tool and you ask the mechanic beside you to borrow something which i only suggest you do once if i have to borrow a tool once i immediately go and buy it i only borrow the tool to complete the job give it right back to them professional mechanics have professional tools and you must purchase your own tools in order to be a knowledgeable and capable mechanic one of the last things i'm going to share with you guys a maintenance practice always use your torque wrench you know you're going to install a bolt or you're going to install a b-nut or a line or or anything you're gonna look up the torque on the part number that you are securing all right you can look at the ipc to figure out what the part number is the illustrated parts catalog and then you're going to use your torque wrench paying attention to inch pounds or foot pounds and you're going to torque it remember in most cases you're concerned about over tightening we have torques because in most cases, we're concerned about over tightening. If you go and you crank down on it, you could potentially strip the thread of whatever you're securing, or you could actually just 
break it and, and that would be very priceless.